Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. A symposium on 20 years of progress in radar altimetry is currently underway in Venice, Italy. Radar altimeters on satellites measure the surface topography profile along the satellite track. They are used to measure the global sea surface as well as the heights of land and ice. At the symposium, I got a chance to speak with one of the experts on the topic. Let's take a look. I'm here today with Annie Kazanov, who is the senior scientist at Lagos and Kinez. Now, Annie's going to start by telling us a bit about what is radar altimetry? How does it work? Well, the satellite carries a radar altimeter on board. And uh, uh, let's say every second, the radar sends a, a ra radioelectric uh, electromagnetic signal down to the Earth that is to the nadir, which reflects on, on the sea surface and comes back to the satellite. And uh, by pre precisely measuring the travel time uh, of this uh, electromagnetic signal, we get a, uh, an estimate of the altitude of the satellite above the sea level. And this is done all along the orbit. Uh, and as the satellite covers the whole Earth surface in, uh, let's say, 10 days or 35 days, uh, we and if we average all this um, measurement, after, after accounting for a number of corrections, for example, we need to know the orbit of the satellite in space, we need to know um, the, the delay uh, of the signal uh, because of uh, water vapor in the atmosphere and so on. Uh, once we, we, we have accounted for all these uh, parameters uh, and if we average over the, the whole earth surface we, we we have an estimate of the global mean sea level and when this is repeated uh, 10 days after 10 days or every uh, 35 days after every 35 days uh, we can we can construct uh, a global mean sea level curve uh, and and uh, estimate the evolution of this uh, very important climate parameter now, in addition to the mean sea level, we also see uh, regional changes that are different. In the Philippine Sea, we can see it's it's going up by 10 uh, uh, millimeters a year, and in some places it's going down. Why is that? Uh, first of all, uh, we have discovered that uh, owing to satellite altimetry, because of this global coverage, it is possible to... Um, to construct regional sea level curve and, and we can see that uh, over the last 20 years that is the beginning uh, since the beginning of uh, satellite altimetry uh, some region in some regions sea level has risen faster than at others for example in the western pacific the rate of sea level rise which is recorded by altimeter satellites it's about uh, three to four times faster than the global mean in some regions it's slightly lower uh, so this was re a real surprise and, and a very important discovery. So w what is the cause of that? We, a number of studies which have been conducted in the recent years by, by the altimetry community worldwide have shown that the main cause of this uh, non-uniform sea level change is thermal expansion of the ocean. In some regions, the ocean uh, is, is warmer uh, the, its heat content is uh, larger, so uh, this causes sea level rise. And in, in some other regions, uh, the, the ocean is cooler and this causes uh, sea level fall. So this is the main cause. But there are also other uh, phenomena which can, in principle, give rise to regional variability in the rate of sea level change. Now, of course, now we have 20 years of data from radar altimeters. Is it important to continue doing this, continue getting this, this information? Of course, it is uh, it's absolutely, absolutely uh, crucial to continue. Uh, you can imagine 20 years, it, it, it's not very long uh, in terms of uh, climate record. Uh, why is it important to continue? First of all, sea level is an integrator of uh, the, the response of all components of the climate system. It, it responds to ocean warming, it responds to uh, glaciers, glaciers melting, ice, sheet, uh, mass, ice mass loss, 
uh, the atmosphere also has an influence and the land water, for example, the land water storage change also influence sea level. So this is very complicated. It is an integrator and uh, uh, we, uh, by measuring precisely global mean sea level and regional variability, give constraint to this, um, to, to, to this, uh, uh, in, the, in the estimate of this other component. But, but the ultimate uh, objective of uh, this uh, long-term uh, sea level record is for future projection. Uh, of course, we, we know that sea level will continue to rise, but how much we don't know. There is a very uh, big uncertainty, and the, the main uncertainty comes from uh, the behavior of the ice sheets. Uh, we have observed in the recent, uh, during the last decade, that there is an acceleration of the ice mass loss from Greenland and West Antarctica. We don't know if it is a transitory phenomenon or if, or, or if it is a new long-term trend. And uh, the, the projection, I mean the climate model who project, which, sorry, which project uh, future sea level rise, uh, what do they do? They, they, they simulate the response to global warming of each component of the climate system. And, and they are very imperfect because we don't know, as I said, uh, what will be the exact behavior of uh, such and such component. And, and so the observation of, the, of this integrator, which is a mean sea level, global and regional, uh, is, is absolutely fundamental to, to constrain the model, to validate them and uh, ultimately to know how much sea level will rise in the future at, at uh, such and such location, uh, in particular in low, highly populated, uh, low-lying uh, coastal regions. Well, Annie, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, that brings us to the end of this special edition of Earth from Space. Remember that to learn more about space and about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. From the ESA Web TV studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels. <laughs>